Welcome to the Monday, May the 3rd, 2021 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let committee members and staff introduce themselves by speaking their names. Martha Smirsky, member. Eric Gilbertson, member. Benjamin Cheney, member. And Steve Everett, member. And Meredith Crandall, staff. Meredith, would you like to review the remote meeting procedures? I will. Okay. So this is especially for anybody who's following along at home. Um, so this is being streamed live via Orca Media. Um, and if you're watching that way, you can participate in the committee meeting via the Zoom platform um, through either this link here that goes right to the Zoom video platform, or you can use this phone number with this meeting ID and call in with um, over the telephone. And then you'll still be able to participate. You just won't be showing up on the screen as a, as a picture. Um, so, um, if anybody's having problems accessing the meeting from home, please email me. My email address is down here at the bottom. Also, if once you're in the video conference, you're having problems with the Zoom features, please message me through the Zoom chat function. We would like to keep that chat function to those kind of technical difficulties issues only. Um, the meeting is being recorded and turning on your video is optional all public testimony will be taken verbally. Um, if the chat function is used, it will be added to the public record. Please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This reduces background noise. Um, if somebody does sign on, come on through the telephone, I will go through those procedures then. Um, and we don't have any members of the public, just applicants so far tonight. Um, please wait until the chair has recognized you before you participate and make sure that when you're ready to participate, you unmute your microphone and uh, confirm that you can be heard and provide your full name and address for the record. Um, applicants can just provide their name just so we know who's actually attending. Um, in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, and I'll get notice of that via email, then the meeting will be continued to a time and place certain. If you're having connectivity issues, try turning off your video or closing other applications on your phone or computer. Um, if those at home want to see the documents, they can download them using this link. Um, this also, if somebody from home is having problems using the share screen function, they can download the meeting packet that way and take a look at what everybody else is looking at. Please note that all votes taken during this meeting that are not unanimous will be done by roll call vote. Now hand the meeting back over to the chair. If all the committee members have had a chance to review the agenda, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved, Eric. I'll second it. This is Martha. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Martha. Eric. Uh, and Steve. So we can, Meredith, did Lucky Boardman come on yet? Nope, he hasn't yet. Okay, then we can move on to the application for 100 State Street. Owner Fred Bashera and applicant Fred Bashera review replacement of the awnings in front of Jay Morgan's. Would the, would the representative like to describe the application? Thank you. Yes, hi, this is Fred Bashara, and I represent Jay Morgan Steakhouse, 100 State Street. Our awnings have been up for about 25 years. After several cleanings, that's probably, as, as you've seen, with all the mold on them, it's as good as it's gonna get. So we thought now would be a good time to change the look a little bit and um, 
colors to maybe stand out a little bit more and go with more of our colors indoors, which are a wine slash burgundy style color. And because of COVID, we need the outdoor seating. And so we thought it would be a good idea to put actually retractable awnings over the um, short side of the deck and the two other windows on the deck so that people may sit out there during um, the, at least a soft rain. The main awning will remain the same shape, just changed to the uh, burgundy slash wine color. And please let me know if you would like me to share the photos from the application. That would be nice. So here's what is there now. And the, the J Morgan's emblem is going to stay the same, I believe, Fred, right? And the, the restaurant label there as well. Correct. In the, um, the emblem will, it's, it's exactly the same train, except our newer emblem that we did when we did the uh, renovation, look at the door. It just has a circle around it. Yeah. But the end will be the same. And this is what we're looking to do. And is this color, and it comes out a little funky when we've photocopied it and then scanned it. Is this representative, you think, Fred? Yeah, I actually, I do have a small, like one inch by one inch uh, color of that. That awning there, the main door, uh, because it doesn't retract and because what we've learned over the last bunch of years that the material awnings don't clean on the road very well because of all the road dirt, that we're going to go, um, it's a very heavy duty vinyl. This is what um, Auto Creek Awning recommended us to do. He says a lot of businesses are changing over to it because you can just really hose it off. And if worse comes to worse, you can get up and rub it off, you know, any of the uh, mold or any of the dust that you'll see on it. Is the vinyl a matte finish or a shinier finish? Definitely matte. Okay, thank you. And and that one is not retractable, correct? No, that's on the existing metal frame that's there now. Mm -hmm. It stretches out basically to the to the steps so mm -hmm. that when a guest walks up and they hit one step up, they're gonna be under the awning. Okay. Now this one will be striped as well, Fred? The the main awning will not be striped, but the little ones uh, on the end, the 11 foot ones will be. Okay, I understand now. Is the burgundy color on the solid and the striped the same color? It is. Okay. Even with the vinyl? It is, it actually is. I know this photo doesn't look right. I actually, just got in um, the exact same awnings for the parklet. Uh, it's kind of a freestanding awning and the material I waited, I was hoping it was gonna come in before the meeting because I wasn't hundred percent sure of it myself, but when I saw it, it's, it's actually quite beautiful and it goes really well. It's a darker, it, see how that has the burgundy doesn't really, it's not very sharp in the picture, mm -hmm. but it is a nice striking, um, wine color. Uh, Fred, do you have a representation of the vinyl? I have a, it's, uh, I have it basically at my office. It's a little one inch square. You know how they give you um, a color palette? Like if you go to a paint store, Yeah. it yeah. looks like that. Okay. Do any of the committee members have any other questions, comments, or suggestions? Eric doesn't. Okay. If nothing further, we can go through the criteria that would apply to this application. For all projects, number one, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. That would be acceptable. 
Number two, existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect to be compatible with the massing size, scale, architectural features, detailing and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties. That's acceptable. And those are really the only two criteria that apply to the application for the awning. So do I hear any, all in favor of the application as proposed, speak your names. Eric. Martha, I, I have some question about the vinyl, but relying on Fred's representation, I'll say yes. Thank you. Okay. Ben says yes. And Steve says yes as well. So application is approved four to nothing. Meredith, what, what is their next step? Um, so the next step is that once we get the recommendations forms from you, Steve, um, because there weren't any tweaks or adjustments, we will get, yeah, this doesn't require site plan. So this will just come, go out as a administrative permit. Um, we just have to actually have people in the office to do it. Audra will be in the office tomorrow. I don't think she has any other permits to issue ahead of yours. So it might even be issued as soon as tomorrow, but definitely. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. I have a, I put everything on hold to make sure obviously we got the um, okay from you guys. Fabulous. So. Well, thank you very much for coming forward with your application and uh, good luck. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Bye bye. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a couple of phone numbers for Lucky Boardman. Do you want me to give him a call, Steve, and see if I can track him down? Sure, that would be great. Should we do the minutes in the meantime? Sure. Has everybody had a chance to look at the minutes from the last meeting? Yes. Yes, I, I, I did. I have one change. I think it ought to be uh, clear that I took over as chair during the application for Steve's building. That's not really clear in the minutes. Let me just confirm that Meredith heard your recommendation. She's probably yes, on the phone. I did. I got oh, okay. it. Okay. Okay, good. Any other changes, comments, or suggestions? Um, on the last paragraph, the review of the minutes from April 5, onto that impervious <coughs> thing, it looks like there's a sentence missing. It says where impervious is listed, and then Meredith will sh check the recording. It doesn't really tell you what the issue was. I think that a sentence saying, question whether the word should be impervious should be in there, something like that. Got it. Okay. Any other changes or suggestions? If not, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes with those two suggestions? Here, I'm Eric Mose. Okay. All second. All, second. All in favor, speak your names. Martha. Eric. Ben. And Steve. So the minutes are approved with those two changes.
One one thing I wanted to bring up uh, is that uh, there there are plans afoot to, for major changes to the state house. Now I know we don't have any jurisdiction, but uh, they've got a long range plan and a short range plan for major additions to the state house. A big a glass addition between the state house and the uh, Pink Lady, and uh, a proposal for Court Street that uh, uh, putting an office and apartment building and a parking garage there in that hole behind the thrush. Uh, and I know we can't do anything about it, and I don't know what's going to happen because it's kind of funny. These plans were done. The contract was let March 15th, and they already submitted proposals in a week ago. I'd hate to plan something for the state house in five weeks. <laughs> uh, Eric, do you have any email traffic on that? Are you can forward to me? So what was that, the glass between the pink lady? I don't know what the pink lady is. It's that Victorian house that's used as offices on Court Street, Ben. It, if you're looking at the state house um, from the front, it'd be on your left. Is that Court or is that? Oh, that's Baldwin. Baldwin. That's Baldwin. Sorry. No, that's okay. Yeah, that makes more sense. It's very. It's a very odd process. I. I am not going to forward the email because I don't know exactly why I have it. So. But it's it's just something we should keep an eye on. I think on whatever I find out, I'll let the committee know. I do think it's very preliminary, so they're not going to start construction next week. The, the other problem I had with it is is one I think, and Steve might agree with this, is doing any planning at this point for what office space you need or should look like is crazy. So we don't know what it's going to be like in three to five years, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I've heard some different opinions on how many people will be coming back to their offices after the COVID issue is over. Eric, is this for legislative offices or for some sort of an agency? It's for legislative offices. Oh, okay. And. Uh, you know that uh, they've got that whole the old National Life Building, then the Transportation Building, now the Tax Building. We've got a lot of space in there that's close to the State House, mm -hmm. and it, it just needs to. I think with the whole COVID thing, I think we all know that working condition offices are not going to be the same mm -hmm. after that, or how much office space people need. Mm -hmm. Meredith, any um, luck getting a hold of Boardman? Yes, uh, he was out on an emergency call. He's wondering if we could give him 10 minutes to call in. Okay. Um, and I did want to just throw this out here. Um, Liz isn't here, but um, the city is considering giving um, committees the, I think it's still going to be an option, um, starting in July of having a hybrid meeting system where um, probably most committee members would still be calling in via Zoom but I would be up in the council chambers and um, attendees could show up in person or even potentially going all in person. 
Um, and so it's something for for you all to think about about what you're comfortable with. We don't have all the potential procedures in place yet um, for safety precautions, but um, you know, I, it eventually you guys would probably need to take a vote as to how you wanted to go forward. If you want to be all in person or not. If you are all in person, I wouldn't be surprised if DRC members wouldn't be sitting at that middle round table in the future. You'd be up in the higher tier so that you could space out a little bit more. Um, and we're we're hoping to still be able to do electronic packets if at all possible. Um, but we need to figure out the logistics of that. Uh, I wanted to make sure you were aware that that's where we were headed and to be able to start thinking about it and what you might be comfortable with. Meredith, I don't remember, do the windows open in there? The windows do open and there are AC units. Um, there's, oh, huh. Lucky's in, but for some reason he's muted. Is that better? Yes, there we go. Technology. <clears throat> oh, that's okay. That's okay. I'm just, I'm glad you were able to call in. Yeah, thank you so much for the reminder. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Okay, so we're up to the application for 8-14 State Street for the installation of light fixtures. Lucky, would you like to describe your application? Uh, yeah, what we're looking to do is just illuminate the commercial tenant signs and add two LED gooseneck lights on each commercial spot. That's better. Okay, two questions. Number one, the color is the antique bronze color or the black? Uh, black. Okay, and the second question is on the, the bases of the lights will be mounted in the sign band or in the brick? Above the sign band in the brick. Will there will the brick be cut out in order to install a box for the electrical connection? No, it'll be surface mounted. I do. Oh, okay. And where will the feed for the electric come? It'll come from the each tenant's panel in the basement. Oh, okay. And then it'll come through through the bottom of the unit, and then. Depending on the unit, uh, two of them have access up top, so it'll just be a little junction outside, but we're going to paint them the color of the brick or the band, so it'll blend. Okay. Uh, are you going to uh, do all the drilling and holes through the mortar joints rather than in the brick? Yes. Is there a reason you don't want to mount them in the sign van? Well, it's only about three quarters of an inch thick and there's still brick behind it. <clears throat> so I did more damage to the sign van. And then our thinking was in the future, if another tenant comes in and their sign is 47 characters long, um, it'll change the whole, you know, it'll change the whole uh, layout. So if we went above it, then if we ever have to do any modifications, We'll have access to the conduit, the wires, and the lighting to relocate that to more symmetrical design. Thanks. Yep. Any other questions, comments, or suggestions from committee members? No. Okay, if not, then I can read through the criteria for all projects. 
exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building and other properties in the district. That's acceptable. Yep. Existing buildings shall be re recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing size, scale, architectural features, detailing and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties. Acceptable. Yes. And then outdoor lighting fixtures. The structural design of outdoor lighting fixtures shall be compatible with the architectural design and function of the building and compatible with the neighborhood. That's acceptable. Yes. And based on those recommendations, do I hear a motion? Do I hear all in favor of the application? Committee members, please speak your names. Martha, yes. Eric, yes. Ben, yes. And Steve, yes. So the application is approved. Excellent. Thank you all. Uh, so lucky so we're going to get that recommendation form that steve just went through um he's going to sign it he'll get it to our office and then when we have that we'll finish processing your um permit application because it involves outside lighting um it'll take a little bit longer than just a straight design review because we have to make sure that we um do an administrative site plan that it's mostly just about the lights um, but we have to do this little report that goes along with it. But hopefully we'll get that out to you this week. Excellent. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you very much for coming back after your emergency. We appreciate it. I'm actually in their house, so yeah, no problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, good. Thank you so much for your time, and uh, we'll talk shortly, I'm sure. Thank you. Okay, thank you, and good luck with your project. Does anyone else have anything to add to the meeting? If not, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Eric moves. Ben second. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Martha. Eric. Ben. And Steve, so meeting is adjourned. Thank you all and have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Same to you guys. Everybody have a good time. Bye. <laughs> Night. <laughs> Thank you.